Hello, my name is Sheila Falls, and I'd like to welcome you to the Gaelic Roots Lunchtime Series at Boston College. Gaelic Roots is sponsored by BC Irish Studies in collaboration with the Burns Library. Each of the artists will be presenting from their hometown, and the performances are pre-recorded to present you with the best quality sound. However, the artists will be available on Facebook immediately following the event to answer any questions or just to say hello. First up, we have Manus McGuire, fiddle player from County Sligo. He is coming to you from his home in Clare. Manus has a new CD out, The Copper Plate Sessions, and you can find his website posted at the end of the performance. I'd like to please welcome Manus McGuire to the Gaelic Roots Lunchtime Series. Hello, my name is Manus McGuire. Uh, I'm a fiddle player from Sligo, originally in the northwest of Ireland, but uh, living now in County Clare, down further on the west coast. And it's from my home in County Clare, here in the little village of Tumgrenny, that I'm recording this concert for you. Um, Tumgrenny, uh, of interest is, and you should know this, Tumgrenny is just a, about 10 miles or so north of Killaloo, in County Clare as well. And of course, Killaloo is the home place of Seamus Connolly. And many of you will know, I'm sure all of you will know this, that Seamus Connolly uh, was head of the Gaelic Roots program at Boston College for many years. I think the final year of the Gaelic Roots was 2003, if I'm not mistaken. And in fact, in that year, 2003, Seamus Connolly asked my brother and I, Seamus McGuire, and myself, Manus McGuire, to come and perform at Gaelic Roots. And it was a very enjoyable experience to be there for that final Gaelic Roots series in uh, Boston. So, um, so, so there's a nice connection there between the East Clare uh, region where, we, where I am now when we're recording this concert and Boston College. And that's something I wanted to, to bring home to you as students there at the college. I hope this, the studies are going well for you. Um, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about the background before I play any music now. I'm going to play, just tell you a little bit about the background of, you know, we're a small country here in Ireland, we're less than five million people. But having said that, there's a huge musical tradition, both music, song and dance tradition here in Ireland. And that's been um, to the forefront of our uh, life here in Ireland uh, and has been for generations. Uh, it's an oral tradition passed on um, through generations and that's something that we're very proud of. Arts and literature are uh, very much to the fore of our, in Irish life. And it's something that I suppose in many ways we punch above our weight in a world, in a, in a world um, setting. Uh, at, and that's something we're very proud of, as I say. Irish music is played all over the world now. In many ways, it's a global phenomenon. And uh, as I said, even though we're slightly less than 5 million population, and the, the country from north to south, you can travel in f maybe five, six hours, and from east to west in two hours, two and a half hours anyway, from, you say, Dublin over to Galway. Um, there are still, having said all that, there are many regional variations in our music. In Donegal, for example, in the Northwest, uh, because of the uh, history of travel between Donegal and Scotland in particular, there's a huge Scottish influence in the Donegal style of fiddle playing and in the Donegal music in, in general. Further down the West Coast in Sligo, uh, in the Northwest, where I grew up, there's a different fiddle style again. The, the fiddling uh, there is very much um, emphasized by the, the, the long bows and the ornamentation within the reeds and jigs which are primarily played there. I should have said that in Donegal, the big tunes up there would be the highlands and flings. So you have a regional variation there, even within the northwest, from Donegal down to Sligo. Further down the west coast, then in County Clare, where I'm living now, uh, there's a, the, the fiddle playing is much more laid back and easy going and the style is very much, um, as I say, rhythmic, but at the same time very laid back and, and uh, cushioned back as opposed to the lively, vibrant Sligo, the Sligo style. And then going down the west coast again, further down to the southwest, to the Cork Kerry region, that border there between Cork and Kerry is known as Sliad Lugra. And uh, there's a different style again. The, the big tunes down there would be the, the slides and polkas. And um, there's, again, there's a difference in the, in the um, rhythm in the playing and, and in the tune type. So 
you know, there's a quite a variety of uh, film songs around the country, so there's different styles there. But in many ways, now with travel uh, and the social media, all of these tunes, it's a big melting pot and people play different styles and um, people from Kerry might sometimes play Sligo tunes and his Sligo style. So people are attracted to different music, not just within Ireland, but we say I heard Irish musicians listen to Scottish music, to music from Cape Breton and all of that. So there's a whole lot of things going on there. And I'm sure you're all very aware of that. I know in Boston, there's a big uh, influence of the Cape music of Cape Breton as well. And I'm, 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 there's something I'm very aware of. And the Cape Breton film music is something I love. But I'm going to open, having said all that, now I'm going to open with a selection of jigs. And as it happens, the first tune is from the Shalev Lucre, well, it's certainly associated with the Shalev Lucre area that I referred to earlier on. It's from the playing of Dennis Murphy and Julia Clifford. It's, it's a jig called The, uh, the Humours of Lachine. And I'm going to play after that then the Hag of the Churn. And then the third jig is called Paddy Taylor's. And Paddy Taylor was a flute player from County Limerick which is very near me here. Claire and Limerick are on Shannon side together. And uh, Paddy Taylor was from County Limerick, but lived most of his life in London, England, and was very well known in the music scene, the Irish music scene in London for many, many years. And this is one of the many jigs that's associated with Paddy Taylor, simply called Paddy Taylor's jig. So three jigs to start with, the uh, Yumers of Lachine, the Hag of the Churn, and Paddy Taylor's. three jigs. I'm going to continue now with uh, playing a selection of hornpipes. Um, the first of these, I suppose, I did talk about briefly there about Donegal fiddle playing and it's very much characterised by the short snappy bow. So you'll hear that bow 
old style in the first of these hornpipes is one I'm playing since I was a kid growing up and I'm not sure if the origin, origins of the tuner in Donegal or not. I can't remember where I first heard it, but the tune is called Taylor's Twist. And then the second hornpipe is one called Cronin's and the third one is called Sherwood Rangers. By the way, just for any of you who are taking note of all the names here, I'm very happy to send over an email of my set list to Sheila Falls Kyohan. And if any of you want to pick up a copy, I'm sure Sheila would be able to give you the set list because sometimes it's hard to remember all the names and the actual spellings of and all of that. So I'm, as I said, I'm very happy to do that. So I, I will, I'll continue now with these three hornpipes, Taylor's Twist, uh, Cronin's and Sherwood Ring.
Cronwright's uh, Terrace Twist, Cronin's and Sherwood Rangers. Now I'm going to play, oh yeah, I should have said that this fiddle that I'm playing is from the Shetland Islands. It was, it was made for me by a man called Ewan Thompson. And Shetland is, um, the reason I'm saying that is because Shetland is a great uh, area for fiddle music. Shetland Islands are about 200 miles off the northeast coast of Scotland, between, literally between Scotland and Norway. So from Aberdeen in the northeast of Scotland up to Lerwick, which is the main town on Shetland, it's about, um, it's about the same distance to travel there as it is from Lerwick over to Bergen in the western part of Norway. So there's a, there's a very rich uh, fiddle tradition in Shetland and I go up and down there have been for many years. But this uh, fiddle is, is from there. I just thought I should tell you that. I'm going to change now to another fiddle here. So I'll just be out of camera for a minute. And uh, this other fiddle is, uh, was made for me in Ireland by a, man, a, a Dutch man called Mick de Hoek. And he's based out of Dublin on the, on the East Coast. So I'm tuning the fiddle a half tone down here because I'm going to play for you a slow piece. It's a, a lovely air, a song air that comes from County Waterford on, down in the southeast part of Ireland. And it's one of our best known emigrant songs in the Shandos tradition. And it was written by a man called Podrigo Melida, who comes from Schlieve Gua. But the actual name of the tune is called Schlieve Gal Gua. It's um, to do with the, a mountain range down in the west part of Waterford, which is known locally as the Daisha country, D-E-I-S-E, Daisha country, West Waterford. So it's a beautiful song here from that area called Schlieve Gal Gua.
Steve Galgula. And as I said, the fiddle is tuned to half, toned down. And I like to do that for the slow area. So that represents, I suppose, the song part of our tradition. I don't sing, but I play the fiddle. And as I said, the song air is something that I wanted to include on, a, on this programme. So now I'll go back to the other fiddle again. And uh, I'll play a selection of jigs this time. Uh, these are these are jigs that I um, tend to play when I open a set here in, well, of course, this year we've had no uh, live concerts in Ireland, uh, apart from at the very beginning of the year, of course, before this pandemic struck. So earlier in the year and maybe last year, I was opening my sets with this particular selection of jigs. And they're all traditional jigs, these four. Uh, the final two, the third and fourth jig, are definitely played quite a bit in sessions over here. And I think they are in the States as well. I'm sure you know the concept of sessions where people all just gather together and play some music in a, a bar situation. And that's, the sessions are very popular here in Ireland and have been for many years. So those of you who come to Ireland to play music, you'll know all about that. So the four jigs in question are Have a Drink With Me, which is a good uh, title, I think, for a tune when you're going to a bar. Have a Drink With Me. Uh, the second one is The Girls of Banbridge, then The Boys of the Town. And finally, the tar road to Sligo. So four jigs for you.
jigs, I suppose they're associated with Sligo, Sligo music, but they're actually played all over the country and they're one selection that, uh, as I say, wouldn't be um, synonymous with any one particular part of Ireland. They're generally played, and especially the last two jigs, they're widely known and, and widely played in sessions all over the place. Uh, so the names of those again are Have a Drink With Me, The Girls of Banbridge, The Boys of the Town, and The Tower Road to Sligo. Now, let me see what's next. Oh yeah, I'm gonna play a different type of piece. I have to change the fiddle again here. Um, on the low fiddle, on the low tuned down, half down, half tone fiddle. And this piece is uh, an interesting one. The background to it is that um, a man called Johnny McCarthy wrote the tune. Johnny is from Cork. He's a fiddle player and a flute player. And I've met him over the years and I've been asking him about this tune. He wrote it, I think, in the early 90s when he was living just outside Zurich in Switzerland. And the piece of music is called Kushnacht. K-U-S-N-A-C-H-T. Kushnacht. I asked him about the, the title Kushnacht. It's the German word for a kiss in the night. That's what it literally means. But Kushnacht is an area, is a suburb of Zurich. And uh, Johnny really loved the place when he lived there. And um, apparently a lot of older people, retirees, have come to that area over the years to live. It's a beautiful area, apparently. And um, it has had many famous residents. Uh, probably the best known of all is um, a lady that I'm sure whose name you're all very familiar with over there. A lady born in 1939 just outside Brownsville in Tennessee. And the queen of rock and roll herself. And the lady I'm referring to of course is Tina Turner. So Tina Turner is a resident of Cushnock and has been since 1994. So that's the background to the tune. It's a, it's a lovely slow piece by John McCarthy. And I'll play it for you now, Cushnock. Thank you. 
Johnny McCarthy's piece, Kushnacht. Okay, I'm going to change back the fiddle again, just bear with me. And um, I'm going to play a set of reels now that are very much uh, characteristic of Sligo fiddle playing. Sligo, the region in the northwest where I grew up. And this is a set of reels that I just recently recorded on my solo album just over a year ago, an album called The Copper Plate Sessions. And um, the opening reel is, is known as Bonnie Kate. It's a very well-known traditional reel. The second one is the Hare's Paw. The third and fourth are the old and the new copper plate reels, hence the title of the copper plate set, this being the copper plate set, and the album is called the Copper Plate Sessions. And then the fifth and final reel is a version of the Mason's Apron. And uh, it's a version I got from the whistle playing of a man called Michael Russell. He was from Doolin in Northwest Clare, about an hour and a half north of where I am now. And Michael was one of three brothers, Michael, Gussie and Packy Russell, three well-known brothers in Doolin, the Russell brothers. And this was Michael's particular version of the Mason's Apron. So Bonnie Cage, the Hare's Paul, the old and new copper play reels and Mason's Apron. And I think these will be played very much in the Sligo style of fiddle playing that I referred to earlier on. Lots of energy, uh, lots of long bows and um, vibrancy in the music of Sligo and I suppose the, the best known exponents of Sligo fiddle music and I'm sure the names that you have heard of Michael Coleman, James Morrison, Paddy Killorn but there are many more but these were the people who are best known in that Sligo tradition. They all left Sligo as young men, well, well certainly Michael Coleman and James Morrison did, went to the States, uh, lived out their lives in New York and uh, both died young men. Um, and Michael Coleman died in 1945, and I think he was only in his uh, 50s at the time. And then two years later, James Morrison died in 1947. So, uh, but Sligo style fiddling is very much, uh, very highly regarded still in Irish traditional music. So five reads from Sligo, the copper plate set as I call them.
you again now, and I'm going to uh, continue now by playing a couple of burn dances. We haven't played, we played jigs and hornpipes and reels up to now, and the slow bees. And now I'm going to play um, a couple of burn dances. These are tunes that I recorded way back with the group Buttons and Bowls. That's Jackie Daly, my brother, Seamus Maguire, and myself, and uh, Gary O'Brien. So um, that group still plays together in Ireland, primarily. But uh, we recorded this, these tunes, the Chaffpool Post and Bell of the Ball, two lovely barn dances. Chaffpool is a small little townland outside Tubber Curry in South County Sligo. And every year there's a South Sligo summer school happens in Tubber Curry. So if, you ever, if you're ever over in Ireland in July and you get the Willie Clancy School, the following week uh, every year is the South Sligo summer school in Tubber Curry. And uh, Chaffpool is a small little townland, as I said, just outside Tubber Curry. Chatbull Post and Bell of the Ball. These are two old traditional barn dances. Post and Bell of the Ball. I'm going to switch fiddles again now because I'm going to play a slow piece and I'll tell you now um, this is another song air just like the Shli of Galgu earlier on and um, this is a, an iconic song from the Oriel tradition. The Oriel tradition, Oriel would be regarded as the area in County Loud on the Loud Armagh border, Shli of Goyen all around there and it's a, it was written and probably composed to an air to an original air by Pazaro Durning. I was just checking my note there on that because I wanted to see his, uh, his lifespan, 1700 to 1769. And he uh, was a writer of love poetry and a harper, Pazaro Durning. So the Oriel tradition, as I say, is over in the eastern part of Ireland, about an hour and a half north of Dublin, up around uh, just north of Dundalk in North County Louth, 
maybe South Armagh as well. And this is a song that comes from there, a song there, it's called Urkna Cain Bicancha. It's an Irish word, but again, as I said, I, as I said earlier, I'll, uh, the separate list is written out and I'll be happy to send it on to Sheila and you can get it that way. So just for the correct spelling of all these tunes. So as I said, we're now, I'm, I'm trying to represent most of the country, Donegal, Sligo, Cork, Kerry earlier on, and now I'm over in the Orient tradition. So um, we'll, I hope you enjoy this era. Work in a cane becancha. I have one more piece to play for you. I just changed fiddles again. And I'm going to play now a selection of three reels. The first one is known as Martin Wynne's. It's one of the many tunes that Martin Wynne wrote. Now, just to give you a bit of background, Martin Wynne was from a place called Bonanadon in County Sligo. He lived from 1913 to 1998. And he, like a lot of Sligo fiddle players, he emigrated way back then, firstly to London, England, and uh, wrote a lot of tunes there. But then he eventually went to the States. He went into Boston, to Buffalo first, and then down into New York. And he had an apartment in the Bronx. And he arrived in New York just uh, 1948. So he just missed Michael Coleman and James Morrison. But he got to play with a wonderful slug of fiddle pairs like Paddy Killorn and Lado Byrne. And I was very fortunate as a young fellow when, my first, when I first went to the States to get to meet uh, and play tunes with Martin Wynn in his apartment in the Bronx. I think that was 1977 when I went over first. And uh, that was a very, I mean, it was a, a very, an amazing time for me to get to meet him. I was, I was so delighted and to get to, to meet him and play his own tunes with him. This is one of his tunes, Martin Wynn's number three. And then the next tune after that is called The Pinch of Snuff. And then finally, a tune called Music in the Glen. So three reels, Martin Wynne's number three, Pinch of Snuff and Music in the Glen. So I'm going to finish with these. But before I do, I want to particularly thank uh, Sheila falls Um She was wonderful and, and she was so helpful in getting all this done. Uh, she asked me to, to do this show, of course, in real life, uh, as a real concert in Boston. I was due to be there as part of my tour in October, but 
for, uh, for reasons we all know now, that wasn't going to happen. So I'm doing it from my home here and uh, I'm delighted to do it and I hope that you get some benefit from it. And uh, so I want to thank Sheila very much and I want to thank all your IT team over there who are uh, editing and helping to put all this together as well. I know they're doing a great job. So I want to say thank you very much to all of them. So I'll finish up with these. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been about, I don't know, 45, 50 minutes or so. I hope you've enjoyed it and um, I really enjoyed doing it for you. So thanks very much for myself, Manus McGuire. Stay well and I hope to get to see you in, in real life the next time.